Hi everybody, welcome back. Ben the Pat Tester here. Cater and Pat Testing is the channel. Uh, we've had a request in from Josh at Poles and Pipes, I think I've got that correctly, about how to uh, Pat Test extension leads and specifically a long extension leads and how to work out the different uh, values and readings that you would get from testing different lengths. So it's a great question. Now, it... Um, I mean, we should all, most of us know how to pat test an extension lead. If, if we don't, I'll gladly do a video on it. Um, but this is assuming um, that you do. So when you're pat testing uh, an extension lead through your machine, um, now I'm lucky enough to have an Apollo here, a 500, as you see. Um, and uh, obviously when you're testing different length extension leads, the reading you will get on the Earth Continuity Test uh, will change depending on the length of the extension cable. So if it's from a 2 metre, say, and you were testing a 25 metre, that earth reading would vary. And the main thing with that is if you're using a basic entry-level um, machine, like the Prime Test 100, something like that, they only have a predefined um, fail limit of 0.1 so if you were testing a long extension lead and the reading would come up say 0.25 say or something like that for example that's not necessarily a fail but because your machine is pre-programmed uh, to fail anything over 0.1 then obviously that's going to be become a little bit difficult for you so obviously there are ways of working out the correct resistance value of your particular length of cable um, so you can check whether that item does indeed pass so one way of doing that is if you have a copy of the code of practice like I do here and you will see here that this gives you resistances of various cables um, at one meter lengths so if you can see here the cross uh, conductor CSA, which is a cross section of, of cable. Now I'm going to hazard a guess here that the majority of cables you will come across will be between 0.5 at the top and probably four mil um, halfway down the table there. And then it will give you the resistance there. You'll see that uh, per meter, but you'll need to use the little um, table and diagram there um, to work out if you've got a particular length of uh, extension lead say a 1.5 extension lead at 10 meters um, use that little um, uh, what's the word I've forgotten the word use that kind of diagram there um, calculation that's the one use that calculation there that will give you your uh, resistance reading for a particular cross-section of cable at whatever length cable you have and then you can cross-reference that against your pack testing machine uh, alternatively there is another website i've come across here which is uh, i think it's its um don't know who they are but i've just come across this on google <clears throat> you've got a pat earth limit calculator there so you can literally just type in you can see as i've done there 10 meter length of cable 2.5 millimeter cross section gives you an earth pass reading of uh, 0.18. So if your um, basic machine is giving you a reading of 0.15, say, then you know that that cable that you're testing is okay, even though your machine is uh, saying to you that it, it's a failure. Basically, you just have to, uh, because of the... Uh, nature of those entry level machines um, you just have to do a quick calculation uh, and work it out if you're lucky enough to have a downloadable machine like I do here with the Apollo 500 there is actually a built-in lead length limit calculator so as you can see there I've just popped in 2.5 millimeter uh, cable area 10 meter length and it gives you the same reading 0.18 now obviously the difference uh, with an Apollo, as I'll show you quickly here, um, if I just go into my settings here, um, as you'll well know, with an Apollo, and this is why uh, they're so much better than the entry level machines, is obviously you can put in pre pre programmed test sequences. So, as you can see there, you can pop in extension lead, different lengths, different cable cross sections. So I've got kind of 1.25s at different lengths there. I've also got 1.5 and 2.5. So if you come across 
110 volt cables uh, at different lengths. So obviously, they're all pre-programmed in, so you don't need to do the manual calculations. You just select the, the one nearest to uh, the uh, item you're testing, and it will obviously be pre-programmed and do it all for you. Um, there is also, I think there's a Seawood app. I think it's for the prime test range. It's a Seawood app and i think um this calculator that was on here is built into the app so it's specifically designed for manual pack testing machines but it will allow you to work out the cable uh, cross sections there so yeah so um yeah you can work it out this way but it's a little bit uh, more tricky or you can use a, a website such as this or you can bring it up on your phone i think there is one like this on the seawood website or just you know do yourself a table if you are using a, an entry level machine just do yourself a little um you know, a little table, a little sheet on a piece of paper and just snap a picture and save it on your phone and then you've always got a quick point of reference. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.